Hey, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Meek, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to go from that gold level player in Rainbow Six Siege to finally hitting plat and being that platinum level player. Now, before we get into this video, I just want to say thank you guys for 200 subscribers. I know I've been slacking on posting on a consistent basis like I should be, but nonetheless, I just want to say thank you guys for 200 subscribers because this wouldn't happen without you guys, and I just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Now recently in Rainbow Six Siege for the past two seasons I have been playing with my friends who are kind of stuck in gold and silver and no I'm not using them to boost I have genuinely popped on different accounts and trying to play with them to give them tips and stuff on how to get better and while playing with them I have noticed a few things that I'm going to be talking about in this video. So in this video I'm going to be giving you guys 10 tips that will help you guys improve your skill set in Rainbow Six Siege and help you guys finally hit platinum and keep it. Now the first thing I want to talk about in this video is droning. While playing with my friends I've noticed that a lot of times during drone phase they continue to spot players even though they're all spotted and trying to get those extra points to get them to the top of the leaderboard and I also noticed that after drone phase they don't really use their drone they just go in through the first entrance that they see and they end up usually getting picked off by roamers early on in the round and getting interrogated and honestly it's such an easy fix and it's such an unnecessary death all you have to do is take your your drone and drone wherever you're gonna enter through it doesn't take that long I mean I know you guys are probably just lazy but it really doesn't take that long and it's gonna save you your life and it's probably going to get you an easy kill on a roamer now the next thing I want to talk about in this video is going to be players using their breaching charges on windows and doors and same thing with your ash charges using them on windows and doors and same thing with Sophia's to be completely honest, breaching charges in my opinions should only be used to blow floors above objective or to create small rotation holes in soft walls or occasionally to troll. Nonetheless, putting a breaching charge on a window and a door 9 times out of 10 will probably get you killed because A. Blowing a breaching charge is very loud and B. Placing a breaching charge is very loud. They tell roamers where you are and sometimes anchors and honestly a lot of times that I see my friends place breaching charges or windows and doors they end up getting it shot or they end up themselves getting headshotted because they're placing it and a roamer heard it now the next thing i want to talk about is when it comes to weapon attachments and your skill set your weapon attachments and your skill set correspond to each other and i'm not saying that like there's god weapon attachments for diamonds all diamonds use the same weapon attachments that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is that just because a diamond uses a certain weapon attachment doesn't mean you need to use that weapon attachment diamonds have their own skill set they have their own play style you do not fit that play style at that moment just because bolo uses an a and angle grip doesn't mean you a gold xbox player or ps4 player needs to get that angle grip and that a cog pc players have different recoil patterns pc players control their recoil with their entire hand xbox and ps4 players control recoil with their right thumb it's not the same thing just because bolo uses some attachment doesn't mean you need to use that attachment and especially when it comes to suppressors suppressors take away a lot of damage the reason why a lot of pc players have suppressors is because because they know they could get the headshot with it if you are that player who normally gets body shots and not headshots which all of you probably are you do not need a suppressor a suppressor is not going to help you when it comes to landing body shots it's literally you're just going to look at somebody shoot them up and it's going to be like they're invincible to bullets because you have a suppressor on it now the next thing I'm going to be talking about is aiming head level. Aiming head level is a very important thing to winning majority of your gunfights. Rainbow Six Siege is built around whoever gets the first headshot. Whoever gets the first headshot in the gunfight, whether it be skill or luck, wins the gunfight. That's what this game revolves around. And that's why Ubisoft, when they build maps, they give a lot of keys to where head level is. That's where all the designs and bullet holes and certain walls and blood stains and pictures, paintings, all that other stuff. Those are majority of times where head level is. Paintings normally go where head level is when you're standing. Little designs on the walls tend to be when somebody's crouched. Having a crosshairs already aimed at head level will give you such an advantage when getting into any more gunfights moving forward. Now the next tip I'm going to be giving you guys is using operator exploits. 
And when I say use operator exploits, I am not saying use clashes, shoot through shield glitch, or IQ's invincibility glitch. That is not what I'm saying. I am saying, for example, Fuse. The way Fuse was accidentally designed is that his gun gave him almost perfect hit fire, his pistol. And essentially what I'm saying is if you are a Fuse main, use that. You know, you don't have to do a glitch to get Fuse's gun to do perfect hit fire. It kind of is like designed that way. But mainly what I am talking about when I say use operator exploits i'm talking about traps capkin for example his trap he doesn't have to be standing up to place it. he could place it while crouched it is more difficult for an attacker to see a capkin when it is down at like their ankle level as opposed to head height when he places it standing up another example lesion you do not have to be right on top of a lesion for it to go off and hit you it's kind of like a snake if you are near a lesion is going to get you if you are near a snake it's most likely going to bite you same thing with a frost mat you do not have to be directly on a a frost mat for it to go off just walking by a frost mat or landing near a frost mat when hopping into a window will set it off and it will vacuum you into it use those to your advantage and a little tiny thing tied in with that is use all your gadget a lot of operators have impacts c4s if you're in a 1v1 situation your impacts can be very useful throw them across the room maybe you'll down them it takes about two impacts to down somebody now the next tip i'm gonna be giving you guys is just pay attention and take notes and i'm not saying like every time you play room six siege or every time you watch a youtube video room six siege sit there with a little journal and notepad like you're in school what i am saying is every time you die or every time you lose a game there is something you did that caused you to lose that game or something you did that caused you to die try to learn from them every time you die or lose a game it's your fault stop blaming your teammates there's reasons why varsity gaming can solo queue all the way to diamond every season there's reasons why i can solo queue to plat every season your teammates are not the leading cause to you losing a round or losing a game it's you anybody can get an ace anybody can clutch a 1v5 believe in yourself learn from your mistakes it's possible also when you watch gameplay videos and you see you know certain diamonds or certain youtubers hold certain peaks try to start holding those peaks you know not everybody is going to know about a peak that every youtuber does however everybody's gonna know about everything people doing pro league because pro league is so famous as opposed to not every youtuber on rainbow is famous now the next tip i'm gonna be giving you guys is kind of two parts it is map knowledge and vertical gameplay every platinum level player and every diamond level player whether it's plat 3 plat 2 plat 1 or diamond you guys need to have map knowledge you can't be saying oh i'm gold one and i want to hit plat and then you don't know every single room name of every single ranked map and i'm not saying like every single room name as in like every room on a map i'm saying like every single room where there is an objective you should least know that and the room surrounding a you should at least know those callouts before you try to say I want to be a platinum level player vertical gameplay this is not really a must it's just something I'm throwing in there vertical gameplay is very important when it comes to being able to kill a mirror or kill a mirror placement from below or kill an operator who is camping in a corner from below without having to ping them that is a very powerful play pinging people especially when you're in the gold one plat three range tells people i should move they know where i am my spot is compromised to do vertical gameplay you shouldn't have to ping people if you're pinging people to do vertical gameplay you're doing it wrong now this next tip is something that I struggled with for a while and that is being kill hungry. Being kill hungry ultimately will get you killed. Unless you are going up against a Doc or a Zofia, those are the only people that can revive themselves. So those are the only people that you have to kill once they are down. Everybody else, they can get down and you don't have to worry about them. They are not moving unless they get Doc. But if they get Doc, Doc has to somewhat come near you in order to heal them. So either way, just don't worry about your downs. Worry about whoever is gonna push you next that's gonna help you a clutch 1v5s and 1v3s which are pretty easy because people are kill hungry and if you are sitting there worried about kills you're not gonna be able to defuse in time if you are sitting there worried about having the perfect scoreboard and being at the top of the league every single time you're not gonna become that good of a player prioritize what's more important is it your kill or is it winning the round now the next tip i'm gonna be giving you guys is single-handedly like the most important tip out of this entire video and that is basically you can't be scared to push things 
Occasionally, if you are defending, however, I will contradict this just a tiny bit. If it is like a 5v1 you're defending, not everybody needs to push, especially if you're anchoring. Like, I hate when I'm a roamer and then an anchor leaves room to try to get a kill the last person alive on the attacking team and then they end up dying. You're an anchor for a reason. It just makes it that much more easier for attackers to win. Leave it to the roamers. But if you are attacking, however, you have no choice but to push. If you are an attacker and you are stuck in a 1v5, you're not going to be able to plant. You're not going to be able to plant until you can maybe get it to a 1v1. And even then, sometimes in a 1v1, you can't plant because you know that that person is going to push you. So essentially, if you want to be a good player and a skilled player, you just can't be scared to push things. Push, it doesn't matter if you die. If you die, well, you might get roasted by your friends, but at least you learn something. You learn that, hey, next time I should try to push this way. Next time, that was really something risky that I shouldn't have pushed. I should have pushed the other person or I should have pushed a different way. But you can't be scared to push. You can't be in a 2v1 and sitting there like, oh, I don't want to push this person. I'm going to let him push me. No, if you're in a 1v2, you have to go and push that person and get it down to a 1v1 before you can plant just stop being scared to push just push if you die learn from it hopefully this video helped all of you guys hit platinum if it did let me know down in the comments if it didn't also let me know down in the comments and i'll try to see if i could create another video to help those who it did not help and if not i'll probably just try to help everybody out case by case just dm me or whatever don't forget to follow me on my social media don't forget to leave a like on this video and thank you guys for watching thank you guys for subscribing and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace Hey, 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 h